Hey guys, today I'm gonna to show you some ways to use my free After Effects tools, Opacity Buddy, Text Buddy, and Text Lasso, along with one of my favorite tools from Euchre Media, SmartRect, to automate your motion graphics and speed up your workflow. If you've ever struggled making text boxes that are automated, you really should check out SmartRect. It's currently on sale for $19 and it's so valuable. It's also not a plugin, so you don't have to worry about opening your project files on another computer after creating them. And stay tuned until the end of this video because we're doing a contest to give away five free licenses of SmartRect through the end of the week. And there's also a grand prize. Okay, so let's start with making a lower third. Let's say that we want a rectangle behind this last name. So I'm going to duplicate this name layer twice and I'll call one first name and I'll call one uh, last name. And then I'm going to use my preset text buddy. So I'm going to search that here. We can also find it uh, in the effects and presets panel. And I'm going to tell the last name to snap to the first name. And then I'm going to use my tool text lasso to pull the, the first word from our name layer. So I'm going to come up here and find name, and then uh, we'll keep this on first word. And then I'm gonna go to last name, and I'm going to add text lasso, and come to name, and tell it to go to the second one. So now we have, if I solo these, I have the first name and last name separated. And this last name is getting its position automatically from wherever this first name layer goes. And now I can add a uh, smart rect to our last name. So let me change the margins here to something like 26 and maybe 16 on the top and bottom. And then I'm going to go into uh, our last name and under text buddy I'm just going to add a little bit of a margin here to space this out a little bit and then uh, let me unsolo these and hide our original name layer so we'll still be changing the text based off of this layer so we can you know double click in here and we can add Sergey's name and you'll see that this automatically spaced correctly so now no matter what I type into this name layer, and we could add the source text of this to an essential graphic, and any name that we put into that in Premiere or in After Effects will automatically space up with the last name having a responsive rectangle on it. So here's a similar example. We have responsive rectangle on the last name uh, that was also created with SmartRect. And we're going to rig this up very similarly um, I'm going to add in a uh, text lasso to both of these layers. And I'm going to instead this time tell it to use the comp name. And I'll tell it to use the second word for this one and the first word for the first name. And so now it's all being driven off of the name of the comp. So now we want to be able to center this up automatically so that, you know, for this graphic, it always goes to the center. And to use text buddy, these need to be left aligned. And so we have a tool here called text buddy center tool. And this is kind of in its early stages, but if I come in here and select the last name, so it tells you here that layer one is this layer and layer two is the last name. So now it's going to take both of these layers into account and center them. And you need to come in here in the position and separate dimensions. Unfortunately, for how this tool is built now, it doesn't automatically do this. But once they're separated, you'll see that this is locked. I can't move it left or right. You'll see that this graphic is now automatically centered. And if we duplicate this comp and put in Sergey's name, you'll see that everything now automatically updated. So here's another example of when this might be useful. So I have a piece of text here, which is our URL, and I can go in here to uh, create a smart rect. And this is honestly how I often create this. And then I go up here to the, uh, the fill and stroke and the margin options. Uh, but if I undo this, you can also go over here and you can tell it you know, how round you want it to be. So I can tell it that I want it to be 100% round and I can tell it that I don't want to fill and I just want a stroke of maybe two pixels. And then I can run this and I get what I want. I could have also adjusted my margins, um, but I'll go in here now. I like to kind of visualize this once it's, once it's on here. So I can um, 
Whoop. So I can create something like this and, and this looks pretty good. And so let's say I want a quick way to animate this. I might go over here to the presets. There's this new blinking cursor typewriter preset. So uh, let's go to this and you'll see that this is kind of cool because it has this cursor, but since it's center justified, it kind of comes in here from the center. So if we left justify this, uh, it would work a lot better. So if we go to our paragraph window and left justify this, you see now it kind of types left to right and that looks nice, but we do want the whole graphic to be centered. So without having to use a whole bunch of expressions, I'm gonna push these keyframes here to the middle. Without having to do a whole bunch of expressions, we can similarly use our text buddy center tool. And if I apply that, and again, I'm going to need to uh, separate the dimensions. The text buddy center tool was made to recenter several layers of text, but if you just use it by itself, it will just center up, you know, left justify, but center up this whole uh, thing. And so I'm going to come here to the smart rect and I'm going to tell it to, uh, for the width, to use the layer middle point. And now, and now as it's smaller, we don't have it sizing with it because we want this to start out as, as if it's a, a whole area that you could type text. And we can also use a preset here. This maybe trim paths that layer in. And now we kind of have a nice, like, you know, a nice animation uh, while this types out. I don't like this cursor uh, staying here at the end. So I think after these keyframes, I'm gonna have this cursor turn off. So I guess we'll keyframe this here. Maybe I'll move this a little earlier. And then right when we get to the end here, we're going to turn this off. And actually it looks like we should have turned this to a uh, layer middle point as well because that cursor was a little taller uh, vertically than everything else. So um, this might be kind of a nice like animation. You know, we could have like a cursor come up here and click this if we wanted. Uh, but let's kind of skip over that. And so another one of my tools is called Opacity Buddy. And so this smart rect is going to, you know, follow everything this does. But one thing it won't do if we turn the opacity to zero, just like everything else in After Effects, if we fade out the opacity here, we also need to copy and paste these keyframes onto uh, the smart rect. But if I add Opacity Buddy to this, um, it now is going to automatically follow the opacity from the parent layer. And in fact, there's extra controls so you can even tell it to like fade out like 10 frames later. So this could fade out and then the rectangle behind it could fade out. But we might just leave this so that these fade out together. And that just makes it easier now. So if we want to do kind of a, a quicker fade or a slower fade, we only have to adjust one set of keyframes. Okay, let's look at one more example and this is something that someone asked one time and I actually made a tutorial on how to uh, manually do this with expressions and the question was how to do like single lines uh, with smart rect so instead of this entire thing being one rectangle that each line would have its own rectangle and uh, it was about a 12 minute tutorial on how to do this with expressions before I had these tools and it's really actually pretty easy to set up now. And so here we have uh, this uh, source text and I'll call this like input text. I'm going to duplicate this a few times and call this line one, line two, and line three. And actually I'll move around the order here just so it's a little bit easier to visually see. And I'm going to use text lasso to grab the text from our input text. So if we add text lasso to all three of these layers, I'll double click this, um, and then we're going to actually parent these to our input text. And so uh, now our position becomes zero, zero, and we can just tell it to use the parent layer and we'll tell it to be the first line this time. And then I'm going to copy this uh, pseudo effect that was created for text lasso. And I'm gonna come in here to line two. And since this already has text lasso on it, I can paste this. 
and I can change this to index number two. So now we're pulling the second line, which is this one that says fix it in post. And then uh, line three, I will similarly paste this, tell it, you know, use parent, and we're going to go line three for this one. And so uh, the amount that it needs to move down here would be this letting amount from our input text. So if you see that this is set to 202, so I can move uh, this down uh, vertically. This is going to be 202 uh, times 2. So it will actually be 404. And then line 2 is going to move down 202 as well. Now, if I turn off the input text, you'll see that these are placed at the exact uh, same location. And so now I can select all three of these and I can add smart rect and I can uh, increase the margins on each one of these. So let's go to something like That might be nice 45 whoop so we'll do 45 on the top and bottom and maybe 90 on the left and right and so we're going to do the same thing to all three of these so this is going to also be 90 90 45 45 and you can kind of do the same thing here you can actually copy and paste this because um, this is all being the size is based on the parent layer so we can not without having to type in the same values we can just kind of copy and paste this and actually as the margins increase it could go in front of the text so we can actually move all of these uh, smart rec layers to the bottom of our tree and we can actually hide all of these layers if we want because uh, this input text should be exactly the same as what's in here. But now, uh, no matter how we change this, so I can uh, change this to Pixel Planet Studios, telling stories pixel by pixel Cleveland. And you'll see as it goes on to a new line that this kind of breaks. But if we if we give this room over here, everything should be correct. So one thing that I have noticed, especially if you use lowercase letters, is that sometimes the, the third line will like get bumped over a little bit. And so to make sure that doesn't happen, we can uh, come in here and create a new uh, shape layer and just kind of come up to right about the point that we want it to be. And we can just call this uh, mat and we can take all the smart rec layers and we can tell it to use the mat from that and we're going to invert the alpha and now no matter how much you know these go over it will never go past that point point. and there's a couple things we could do to take this a step further to make it a little more responsive uh, one of them might be that instead of giving it a just a physical position for this 202 we might actually make it reference the real letting from the source text and so to do that we would let's go in here to separate the dimensions so we're only looking at the y and we can create an expression and i'll tell this to use the parent dot text dot source text dot style dot letting and so now it's going to find the letting amount from our source text and if i copy this uh, y position and come down here to uh, line three and I'm going to separate this one as well and I'm going to paste this and then I'm going to come in here to, and say a uh, times two because if the second line is leaded 202 this one needs to be 404 and now if I change the letting amount here you'll see that this is responsive we could look at things like linking up font sizes but the goal of today is to kind of use these tools that automate the expressions process to be able to quickly create motion graphics. I hope you find these techniques useful to speed up your workflow. Download links to SmartRect and the bundle of After Effects tools from us can be found in the description. And now for the contest. Here are the rules. You must subscribe to Pixel Planet Studios on YouTube and follow us on Instagram. When you're done, comment finished in the comments. Five lucky winners will be announced this Friday. If you're watching this after Friday or want to get your hands on SmartRect sooner, Sergey was kind enough to offer licenses for only $12 through the end of April with code PixelPlanet. 
You're also gonna have a chance to win the grand prize of all 25 of Euchre Media's tools. And I just dropped a new tutorial on Euchre Media's YouTube, so make sure to check that out as well. Thanks for watching. Thank you.